What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14 beta 4 to registered developers about two weeks after the release of beta 3. And if you are a public beta tester, the public beta 4 should be out either later today or tomorrow. I will update the description down below with the status on if it's been released yet or not. And of course I will update you over on Twitter as well. Now we also got beta updates for iPadOS 14, watchOS 7, and tvOS 14 as well. But of course this video is all about iOS and iPadOS 14 beta 4. So anyways, let's go over what's new in this update, talk about the battery life, the performance, the bug fixes, and more. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see it came in around 625 megabytes on my iPhone 11 Pro. That size of course will vary depending on your device and the firmware you're coming from. And you can see here, Apple didn't really tell us too much about what's included in this update, but of course that's what I'm here for. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out the build number for this latest release, settings, general about, software version. You can see there the build number 18A5342E. So we do still have an E at the end of the build, which indicates we should be seeing at least a few more betas, which of course is expected here with iOS 14. And then scrolling down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see we also get an update to that. So it's now at 1.50.23. So if you were having any type of connectivity issues, those could be solved here in beta four. And then I couldn't help but look at the available storage right there as well, just to make sure that the storage bug did not come back and it has not. So you can see there, I still do have 30 gigabytes of available space. So anyways, what's new here in beta four? So the first thing I actually noticed after installing this update is that everything populated instantly in terms of the widgets. So a lot of times in the first three betas, the widgets would just be like black or it would just be completely blank and no data would populate until maybe I you know rebooted the device, locked it and unlocked it. But I noticed that right once I updated to beta four, everything populated instantly, everything was accurate in terms of the weather and the clock, everything seems a lot better with the widgets here in beta four. And that was my very first impression after installing this update. But of course I will be monitoring these widgets throughout the week and let you guys know if anything has changed this weekend on Saturday with my follow-up video for iOS 14 beta four. So definitely stay tuned to that. So anyways, what else is new here in beta four? So we actually have a new widget. So if we go to our widgets and tap on the plus right there and scroll down, you can see it's actually in the previews right here. This is the new widget. So it's for Apple TV. So it's for the TV application. You can add it right there or you can go all the way down and you will see it right here at the T's. Go ahead and tap on that. You can see we get three different sizes like usual with these widgets. So we have the small one right here, this rectangle right there, and then this big square right here. So basically it just shows the up next show. So it says keep watching where you left off or see what's next. So if we go ahead and add this big one right here to the home screen, you can see that's what it looks like. And of course it's not going to be interactive or anything like that, but you can go ahead and tap on it and it will take you into that show and that specific episode as well. So if we go back and maybe tap on the flash right here, you can see it will take us to the flash there as well. So that is a cool little widget there, especially if you use the TV application a lot. Now there is also another change to the widgets here in beta four. So I'm just going to go ahead and add, let's just say the notes right here. Now take a look at when I go to edit this. So I'm going to go to edit widget, take a look at the background. So you can see it has like a yellow tint and that's because that's the dominant color of the notes application. And just for comparison, I have beta three over here on the left on my iPhone 10 R. If I go over here and go to edit widget, you can see the background is blurred, but it's just of my wallpaper. It doesn't have a tint to it like it does here in beta four. And I actually like that. It's a nice little touch the Apple added here in beta four. Now we also get a new size for the shortcuts widget here in beta four. So we now get a one by one widget size there instead of just these two sizes like we had in beta three. Now also new in beta four, we finally have the exposure notification API available in the iOS 14 beta. So we've had this in iOS 13 for a while, of course, because those are public releases. But now if we go to our settings and go down, you can see we actually have a dedicated spot in settings for exposure notification. So it's no longer in the health tab like it was in iOS 13. And when you tap on this, you can see there it says exposure notifications are off. If you turn them on, your public health authority can notify you of possible exposure to COVID-19. Now, unfortunately in the United States, we still do not have an exposure logging application, but I know in Canada, one just recently launched and other countries, you guys do have those contact tracing applications. So this will be a nice feature here 
for you in the iOS 14 betas. Now I talked about this feature a lot in my previous iOS 13 videos a couple months back, but if you still don't know how exposure notifications work, there is a little link right here where you can tap on and it will describe exactly how this works. And Apple has definitely come a long way in terms of describing how this works because there was a lot of confusion at the beginning, but now it's very simple to tell you how the exposure notifications work here in iOS 14. Now also new in beta four, you can see right here that 3D touch is back. So it was temporarily disabled in beta three, but it's back here in beta four, which is great news if you have a 3D touch enabled device. A lot of people complained in beta three and a lot of people actually didn't even update because of that. So now you can go ahead and update to beta four and you will get your 3D touch back. And then you can see another bug was resolved in the app store. It says that the app store no longer quits unexpectedly if full keyboard access is enabled. So that's been fixed here in beta four. Now, moving on to some more important features here, there is actually something new with Apple Music in beta four that was not there previously. So if we go into Apple Music and let's just say we go to the browse tab right here and we force close out of music and go back in, take a look at that. It remembers the tab you were in. That was not how it was in beta three. So I'll show you here on the iPhone 10 R. So we're going to go over to, we'll just go to browse again force close, go back into the music application. And you can see there, it goes right back to listen now, which is the default tab. And that was the default tab in every previous version of iOS. So a nice small touch there to the music application in beta four, something that a lot of people will like a small thing that a lot of people will like. Now, also I did notice something recently with the weather widget. So I noticed that the weather widget now shows when you have like a tropical storm warning or tornado warning or any kind of emergency warning, it now shows on the widget itself. So I don't have that right now, thankfully, but I do have a screenshot. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So you can see there on the weather widget, it actually shows that there was a tropical storm warning and one more. So that's pretty cool that it shows that on the weather widget. So you don't have to rely on, you know, your news or going into the weather application itself. It shows it at a glance there for you, which is nice and handy. Also new in beta four is that the spotlight search or the universal search, whatever you want to call it has been greatly improved. So take a look at beta three over on the left. I searched for a bra and pretty much nothing came up, but take a look at beta four. We get a lot of stuff here in beta four. So we get like some suggestions from Safari. We get Siri suggested websites. We get where I said it in a message, but nothing over here on beta three. And that's the case with anything that you search. You just get more results, more accurate results, and just more suggestions here in beta four, which is always welcomed. Now also in beta four, 4k videos work again inside of the YouTube application. So some people in beta three were having issues where 4k would not be an option inside of the YouTube application. And some people said that logging out would help. And so some people would not be able to watch 4k videos unless they were logged out of their account, but it appears that that's been fixed here in beta four. I never had this issue, but some people were saying that it has been fixed. We also finally get the audio tab inside of the news application here in beta four. And if you're not seeing this, you may need to delete the application, the news application and reinstall it. And then you should see the audio tab down here. This of course is a feature for Apple news plus subscribers. So those are pretty much all of the new features and changes that I've found so far here in beta four. But of course, I've only been using it for under two hours. So I will find more features and changes, I'm sure. And if you guys want to see those, make sure to stay tuned for my follow up video coming this weekend on Saturday. But anyways, moving on to some bugs that I had in beta three that I hope have been fixed here in beta four. So the first thing was actually something pretty annoying and very major. So that was that I could not unlock my phone when bedtime was enabled. So if I enabled bedtime and you know how you guys get the screen right here, when I went to swipe up, I simply could not like it wouldn't activate face ID. I couldn't put in my passcode, nothing. It would just, you know, freeze and I would have to restart my phone to unlock my device. So sometimes it would work after like five minutes of swiping up, then I would eventually have to put in my passcode, but more times than not, I had to reboot my device. So I will be testing that. Hopefully that has been fixed and I will let you know in that follow up video. Now I've also had some issues with the messages application. So you can see here the cursor, when I have it down, the cursor right now is at butt. So like if I started typing, it would be at the end of the sentence, but you can see the blue cursor right there next to I'll need. And that basically just stayed there the entire time until I sent a new message or until I sent that message. So that was an issue. Also, when I would type like this and I would tap this little arrow over here, if I wanted to add a photo to the message, I would not be able to, I'd have to go out of the conversation back into it. And then I would be able to add a photo. So when I just tapped on that, nothing would happen. So 
Hopefully that's been fixed in beta four. I will let you guys know. I've not been able to reproduce it so far, but once again, I've not been using it long enough to tell you for sure if it's been fixed or not. There was also a small bug inside of Discord with the keyboard where you could not see what you were typing because the keyboard would cover up you know, where you were typing into. So I will be testing that out and seeing if that's been fixed here in this beta as well. Now, as far as performance goes for iOS 14 beta four, it feels extremely solid. So it feels extremely smooth. The fact that all of the widgets populated and I've not had one issue with the widgets yet. I've not had anything appear blank when I add it, when I reboot, the clock is accurate. Everything seems to be working super good so far here in beta four. So really no complaints. And I will let you guys know more in my follow-up video, but so far everything feels extremely smooth and a little bit better than it did in beta three, which is a nice sign. And just for fun, I am going to run a quick Geekbench score to see how it compares to beta three. So take a look at these scores there. We got a 1336 versus a 1331 on beta three and a 3501 on the multi-core compared to 3444 on beta three. So definitely some improvements in terms of the Geekbench scores as well, which seems to translate to real world performance because it does feel a little bit smoother than beta three, but it will take a little bit more time to tell you guys for sure if performance is better. Now, one thing I also just realized is that the share sheet is actually faster here in beta four as well. So one of my big complaints in beta three is that the share sheet populated very slowly. So it'd pop up slow. And then sometimes the shortcuts would just not appear. So if you had Siri shortcuts, yeah, it would just not show up here at the bottom. And now it seems like every time the shortcuts populate and every time it opens rather quickly compared to beta three. So definitely a good sign there for the performance of beta four. Now in terms of the battery life, battery life seems to be okay so far. It seems about the same, of course, as beta three, but there's no way I've used this long enough to be able to tell you guys for sure if battery is better or worse. So here's what my battery chart looks like on public beta three on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, my main device. And obviously I've been using my phone a lot and I do charge my phone a lot as well because I do have the wireless charger that I kind of just sit on there and take off a lot throughout the day. So it's kind of hard to tell from these graphs, but I will tell you that the battery life is good on beta three and I would expect beta four to be the same, if not better. And of course, beta three was better than beta two in terms of battery life. And if we take a look at the community poll here that I posted last week about iOS 14 beta three and how it's been treating you, you can see that most people said that it's been good. It hasn't been excellent for most people. It's just been good with some minor bugs. And it appears that most of the bugs that people reported on that had the most thumbs up are the weather widget not existing or just having inaccurate information. So if someone said they can't enable the weather widget on their home screen. That of course is because you do need to open up the weather application and maybe reboot for that to show up. Some people are saying they don't have 4K for iPads, clock widget not showing the correct timing. So all these things have been fixed here in beta four, at least for me so far. I will let you guys know if things change, of course, in that follow-up video. But so far, everything pretty much that people have mentioned here that has a lot of thumbs up has been fixed in beta four, which is a great, great sign. So now should you update to iOS 14 beta four? And I say, yes, absolutely. Especially if you were having any of those issues with the widgets, which a lot of people were, where it showed inaccurate information, it would get really annoying. Sometimes they would be blank. You should definitely go ahead and update for that alone. Of course, the performance is also better and the battery life is probably the same, if not better as well. Not to mention the storage bug did not return. And if for some reason that wasn't fixed for you in beta three, that will be fixed here in beta four. You can see there I have most of my storage remaining. The other only takes up, let's see what it takes up, only 7.88 or six. And then the system only takes up nine. So much less than it did on betas one through two. So yeah, that is iOS 14 beta four. It seems like a lot of improvements in terms of stability and fixing up bugs in this update. Of course, we did get some new features and changes as well, but it appears that the performance and you know fixing these widgets was a main focus for beta four. Now, if you guys found any other new features and changes in this update, let me know down in the comment below. Also, let me know what feature or change you'd liked the most here in beta four. And as always, if you guys enjoy these videos, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss my follow-up video on iOS 14 beta four coming this weekend. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.